What's up guys? Welcome back to another twin motion video. And in this video we're going to look at the vegetation scatter tool. This is a new tool within Twin Motion 2020. It is very powerful. It can really get you some nice looking models when it comes to vegetation in like minutes, almost no time. It's awesome. We're going to go through all of that, everything with the tool in this video. Before I get into it though, I do want to say if at any point in this video you do learn something or you just happen to like the video, then please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Okay, let's get right into it. I am in just a basic house project that I pulled in from Revit and it's got no materials. And I've done that for a specific reason. So let's get into the vegetation scatter tool. You're going to find that within the context and then vegetation scatter. And here it is. It's it's that simple to get there. So now we're looking at grass and flowers and it pulls up all the grass and flowers and it's prompting us to drop a model in here so we can start painting onto some surface. Great. So what do we want to work with? Well, let's go ahead and work with some tall grass. How about that? So I'm going to drag the tall grass in here. We've got our tall grass and I can't adjust any of this until I click on the tall grass. So I want to work specifically with the tall grass. And now I actually have the option of using these tools up here. So what we want to look at is the scatter add. We also have the option of scatter remove and then the vegetation eraser. This is one we've seen before within the painter. It's the same idea. I will cover that too though. So let's go ahead and start adding some vegetation. So I'm going to hit scatter add and now we're prompted to choose a location and we've got this the same icon as the plus and I'm just going to click. And so as soon as I click, I'm going to start to get vegetation that I've chosen. In this case, it's the tall grass, just randomly scattered throughout the surface of my site here. Like the whole site now is covered with this wild, this tall grass. And cool, that, that's, that's fine. And I can continue to add that. I can click again and I get even more. I can click again and get even more and you can take this as far as you want to get thick looking grass. But you could also come back and say, okay, that's a little too much. I want to remove so you can go to the scatter remove and click anywhere on that object. And then you will see the same random grass now removed. Okay. So maybe we do want a little more. That's nice. Um, at this point, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at a bunch of random grass that's just showing up throughout my object. And again, it's based on that object that you've selected. Now I will say it is interesting because while I do say that you can select the object and it will scatter throughout that object, if I were to select like the vertical face of this wall, I'm, I'm not going to get vegetation showing up. And I, my best guess is that twin motion is smart enough to understand that this is a vertical wall. And I'm, I'm curious, even if I try on this roof, so it will work on the roof. And that's because that is a more horizontal surface. So again, it works on the roof because of that. And that's, that's nice to know. We can go ahead and add vegetation on the roof or, you know, maybe we don't want it on the roof in this case, we can just remove it. This is a bit interesting, but because I am apparently not on this ground surface or a, a larger surface or something like that, when I choose to remove the vegetation from this surface, it's not actually removing, but for some reason I can still add a bunch more. Now, <laughs> I don't have a good answer for that other than this remove scatter tool is not necessarily working as well on this surface as it would be this ground surface. I don't know. So that will lead us into the eraser tool. So the vegetation eraser is just like what we used in the vegetation painter. It's the exact same as far as erasing. I now have this, this eraser tool that I can change as far as the diameter, increase, decrease, and wherever I'm clicking, I can now remove that vegetation. And this, it, this fortunately works with the roof here because I may or may not want vegetation on the roof. And so I can just erase that all away, no problem. Goes away, very simple, just like that with the eraser tool. So now that that's gone, let's primarily focus here on the ground plane. So I can always add some more grass, of course, but maybe I want to add something else and I can add some of these poppies. So now I've got two models to work with. And again, the, the, the tool itself is based on using one at a time. So as soon as I click that, I'm now going to have the option to add these poppies randomly throughout my scene on this object, just like 
I did with the graphs, but in a way that is separate. So like the, in, in a way, these are actually separate. All that to say, that is, this is, might be a bit confusing because if I come to my drop down here, I can see that all of this information falls under the scatter vegetation one. And that is because I have both of these applied to the same instance of the vegetation scatter. I can have multiple different options, multiple different models in this vegetation scatter one. But the fact that they're all here means that they're only populated once here. It's just that single object. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, I can answer that in the comments. But of course, besides the grass and flowers, maybe we want to add something else. And we actually have the option of working with trees or rocks or detailed grass, whatever it might be, but maybe we want to add some trees. So let's go ahead and add some trees and it works the exact same as the grass. Let's go ahead and pull this sweet cherry tree. How about that? So I've got a sweet cherry tree here. And I can click that, and again, as soon as I add this to the surface, I get a random placement of these trees everywhere. And this, you know, again, this is starting to look really nice really quickly. And you might notice that there's an instance here where I, it's just not, not painting. There's no vegetation there. And that is because that's a completely separate object, if you will, than the surrounding context. So I basically have this topography out of Revit and this is a subsurface or a sub region of that topography. So let's go back into Revit and see how that's working. So I've got Revit pulled up here and we can see I've got my topography and there's my entire topography and it looks kind of ridiculous, but it's my topography. But I've got a sub region here, which is again, a part of the topography, but it is actually a separate region it's a separate entity in the eyes of twin motion which is really nice and kind of helpful so given that this is a completely separate object the vegetation painter will not apply my vegetation scatter my vegetation scattering will not apply my vegetation to this object only this other object now i can apply it to that object but i have to specifically click that object and i'll show you that here so I've got this sweet cherry tree, but maybe I want it to now show up on this path. I can then click the path and we can see we've got a tree on the path. Now let's do, let's do this with the grass so we can start to see a little more. Then we can start to see now I've got grass on that path. Maybe I don't actually want the grass on the path. So I'll undo that and undo the tree. We'll move the tree. And so we've got this nice set of vegetation that's scattered throughout. So on top of this, you might be wondering, well, is there more to this? Can I change some of the settings here? Because we actually have the option of looking at some of the settings. So I'm just gonna set myself down here in walk mode so we can see the vegetation. And now I'm gonna start to look at the settings. So let's go, let's click on the grass and go into settings here. And now I've got all these settings that I can impact and change as far as the grass. And this will only affect the grass because you can see I'm within the vegetation scatter and I'm within the tall grass zero four. And so I can independently, independently change the grass compared to the trees and independently, independently. So changing the size, I can adjust the size. You can see that, you know, clearly adjust the size of all that grass. Perfect. I can change the tint to anything that I want. That's cool too. It's going to affect all the grass. The dryness, which is very nice. You can see how changing the dryness impacts the grass. Stripes are kind of weird because it will begin to add stripings in. <laughs> it's kind of cool, kind of interesting, but it will impact the look, of course, if you want that stripe look. Maybe if you want to go for more of a football field, soccer field look, you might want to use the stripes. Interesting. Now the wind, it's kind of cool because there's actually wind within twin motion. And if I'm not moving the camera, you could see the poppies as well as the grass are somewhat moving. And that's because the wind for this specific grass is on. I can turn that off and you could see not only does the, the grass stop moving, but I still have the poppies and those flowers are moving because if I were to go back and look at the poppies settings, I can see that the wind is on. I can turn that off, they will stop moving. I can adjust them freely, adjust the size of them, add stripes to them, change the dryness. 
I can do that all independently within the vegetation scatter. And the nice part about this all is that I'm still, all of this has fallen within scatter vegetation one. It's only one object. If I click off and get out of the vegetation and everything, as soon as I click on this, it's all one giant object. And I can always come back here. I can always remove. I don't want some of these poppies showing up. I want less grass. That's not a big deal. If I want to add more trees, I can do it that way. It's very simple to do that. It's it's probably one of my favorite tools that is new within Twin Motion 2020 because it is so helpful and so easy to get such a nice looking model on like a level of context that it's just crazy. The vegetation is amazing. It looks beautiful. It's so simple to do. And I, I'm not even getting into the materials here. And the vegetation is just awesome. And it's so easy and quick to start to populate your model with some nice looking vegetation. And it's just wonderful. Last thing I want to cover in this video, not necessarily regarding the vegetation scatter, but as I move around, you might see that I'm, I'm almost cut off from the the grass and it's just based on the render distance and how far I can see because you know the trees are different in this case because they're trees they're tall and all this they're they're trees and they're not grass that's something to be aware of as well but in the settings if I go to file or actually edit preferences come down to fading of grass and it's just affecting the grass I've got near medium and far and as soon as I click on far and click OK I now have more grass showing up from further away. And it's not saying that the grass is gone and then as I move up to it, it, it actually is populating the grass and like putting it back. The grass is always there. It's just a matter of what is being shown. So to hopefully improve the performance of your model. And again, it's only doing that with the grass because it's only affecting the grass. It's the fading of the grass and not the trees. So that will do it for the vegetation scatter. Really awesome tool. A great way to get any of your objects properly and really quickly scattered with vegetation. It does exactly what it says, and I love it for that reason. If you did learn something and liked the video, if you wouldn't mind demolishing that like button, it really helps me out a lot. Also, please consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That also really helps me out a lot. If you have anything else that you want to know with Twin Motion, leave those in the comments section. I will get to all of them. If you have any questions, suggestions, leave them there as well. I sure hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.